Welcome back everybody. Now I'm very pleased to introduce our guest, showrunner, executive producer and writer Matthew B. Roberts, Katrina Bell, who of course plays Claire Fraser and who has been Golden Globe nominated four times for this role, and the Critics' Choice Award nominated Sam Hewen, who you all know very well as Jamie Fraser. Welcome everyone. Thanks for being here Hello. today. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, what an intense episode this was. Um, I have to admit, I I did have to look away a couple of times. It was it was some hard going. Um, now, Matthew, I know you've partnered with Rain Sexual Assault Hotline for this episode. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to do that and how helpful that was in navigating the scenes with Claire's abduction? Well, you know, we we knew we were going to do this episode from the very beginning of the season and we wanted to be very careful with it. So uh, when Tony Graffia and I started writing, we started doing as much research as we possibly could. We have in the past have, you know, on Outlander, as we know, we've, we've dealt with um, uh, rape and sexual assault and, and many kinds of assaults on the show. So we have a lot of consultants that we can go to um, uh, you know, over the past six years that we've been doing this, um, we've, we've had a lot of consultants that we've talked to and really mine their, um, expertise, uh, before we even start the process. Mm, absolutely. Um, and Katrina, how, how much did you kind of get from that partnership with Rain and, and were they, supportive, helpful in some way? Did you learn from them at all? Hugely. I mean, you know, I think any time you tackle the issue of sexual violence or rape, you want to do it the most responsible way that you possibly can. And I think something that we've always done on Outlander is try to take a point of view and highlight something that can be somewhat helpful in terms of starting a conversation. I mean, when we did season one, the idea of male rape, which was so unusual to see on TV. And with this um, particular storyline, when Matt came to talk to us about it and started um, talking about the idea of disassociation, which is also something that you don't often see when um, rape is being handled. So we talked a lot with Rain about how we could approach this. And also just in terms of making sure that we had trigger warnings before the episode. So you never want to do something like this and not give people the opportunity to kind of go into it with their eyes open and know what they're going to see. And I think it's it's really important to all of us when we approach any kind of subject matter like this, that we do do it in the most responsible way possible. Mm -hmm. And for both um, you and Sam, I have an audience member question from Mitch. Um, the scenes are so emotional in this episode. Uh, do you need time to recover? How do you handle those? Um, I'll let you know that, that one. first. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I definitely think when you're dealing with really heavy subject matter, you know, you do go to quite dark places within yourself. And I think there's always a certain amount of um, purging of it that you have to do. But, uh, you know, I think the healthiest way to be able to do this job is to also be able to leave these things at the door when you when you leave during the day. Um, I think, you know, using your own psyche and mining your own emotions um, can be, if you're not careful, you, you know, you can do yourself psychological damage. So I think it's important early on in when you do this job that you learn how to separate your own life and your life at work, I mean, at least for me. Yeah, and I think, you know, <clears throat> we have, such a safe environment you know i think you know all credit to, to matt and to tony and to our amazing director jamie payne who dealt with this with great sensitivity and 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 gave a, i think a, a really safe platform for us to explore these themes and i think you know when you when you have this community when you have this um, close-knit group of people working closely together i think therefore we can open up more and we can explore these things deeper so yeah credit credit to everyone that was involved in these i think if it wasn't for that we would probably wouldn't be able to to maybe go to those more challenging places mm -hmm. um, matthew i was so 
curious about the sort of disassociation themes where we see um, Claire and Jamie in this sort of 60s, 70s house with this music and the, the kind of super bright colors. Tell me how that all came together for you. Well, it started uh, at the beginning of the season when we, we, we break out the entire season. We knew where we wanted to end and we wanted to end with this particular um, event. And we talked, uh, Tony and I talked about how to, um, really what we wanted to do is give an escape for both uh, uh, the character and the audience. But we, we wanted it to be a survival technique. And what we did is we did a ton of research about this and we found out the people who uh, suffer traumas, and it's not only sexual assault, it's all kinds of traumas that they disassociate with with what's going on in front of them as a survival technique. And we started to break the, the story and I went to Cat and Sam uh, uh, in, I believe it was Katrina's trailer one day and told them about the idea. And I think they, um, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think they r really liked the idea. And I think Katrina, if I remember correctly, didn't want to shy away from the assault. And we dug into it even more when when we talked to you know talked to them about it, and I, I think what we tried to do, and then and then well, Jamie Payne came on board as our director, and we wrote out the '60s. We had to pick a time period so Gary Steele and Trisha Baker could could design it. They, we couldn't just arbitrarily say she disassociates. So we had to pick a period, and we decided when she. When came back from but we didn't want it to be specific so i asked them both to mess it up and if you watch the episode you'll notice that there are pieces in one scene um in the in the what we call dream escapes that are messed up so there'll be objects in one scene that aren't there anymore and, and if you look at young ian's uniform he has wampum beads instead of you know, military ribbons. So we, we decided to really, because Claire was in such a state, she wasn't imagining this as a perfect place. It was just her escape to get away from. And it was a team effort amongst everybody. I think everybody brought their best to this one. We spent a lot of time doing a lot of meetings with Jamie. I met with Jamie on the weekends. Uh, Kat and Sam brought a lot to the table, and, and I had ideas about what it would look like um, and how, how it would feel. We wrote out a bunch of dialogue for it, and it really, over the shooting, it just got you know trimmed down so um, uh, to really what it is. And and then when we got to editing, we even we even trimmed it down even more. So um, it was a really big team effort, and everybody from every designer and a crew and all the cast really dug in on this one. And I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, talking about these incredible sets, I know we, we were chatting a little bit about it before this panel began. Um, and I actually had an audience question um, from Laurie about this. This is the last season for your production designer, John Gary Steele. And he created every set that we've seen over the years. Um, it must be really hard to say goodbye, He's, you know, one of the Outlander family. Um, do you have a favorite set that you recall and why? That's for everyone. Sam? I know, I, well, I, we've just had this discussion, so uh, I know what you, you guys are going to answer be. So mine's going to be slightly different, but mine would be um, the, the Great Hall Season 1, uh, um, Castle Leoch. It's, uh, it's just, it, you know... I remember it because it was such a an impact on me, you know, as as sort of quite green coming into this show and just seeing the dedication and, and detail that he put into it. I mean, he had taken castings, I believe, from from the local castle, Dune Castle, and then okay. recreated this hall and the chandeliers were stag's heads and there was just so many amazing little details. Um, you know, the the the, the sawdust and the dirt on the ground. And then, of course, everything gets completely destroyed after, you know, yeah. four weeks of filming or whatever it is. So um, the just, it just was uh, overwhelming. And that was the first impression of Gary's work. But to be honest, every time he's, he's kind of increased the bar and he's just outdone himself. And he, he's going to be a great loss, but he was uh, a remarkable man to, to work with. 
Yeah, it's it's so hard to choose. What was yours? I mean, I, I, I mean, I, God, I mean, there's there's such a an embarrassment of choices. But I actually um, master mm. Raymond's apothecary in um, mm. in France in season two was incredible. It's it's just I mean I think the thing with with Gary and all of his work is is how much it helps us in our work, and you would go mm. on to any set um, and just the attention to detail and all of those little things that just make the world so alive and so available to you. So, so much of your work of imagination of putting yourself in a place is already done. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that Gary and his team used to do is, you know, you could go into a drawer and the drawer would be filled with things or a cupboard and it would be filled with things. And his his mindset is I don't know where the actors are going to go I don't know what they're going to do and I want if they go to a drawer there should be something in it if they go to a cupboard there should be something in it and uh, that's just like Kat said that's the attention to detail I mean if you look at um, for me you know the star chamber jumps out as in just it's a work of art and it was just, just so sad to tear it down we wish we were kept it up forever but it's it really is walking into that for the first time you looked at it when it was fully lit you just it was you were in awe um but you know the boston apartment it was mm -hmm. just amazing with the detail the the french apart where where uh, uh jamie and claire lived in france was stunning you, you know you had the the brothel you have wilmington streets you have the paris streets that they designed so the list, like Ted said, the list goes on and on and on. And I think for a lot of us, every time we walked onto a new set, it's not that you forgot the old sets, but you went, wow, you outdid yourself. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. one thing that Gary did. We, we, always, we always wanted to do this for the audience and for, for the, the cast is to give them that new world. So when they, are, when they reach the new world, you're in it, whether it be Paris or the Caribbean or, or uh, the new world. Um, when we went down to South Africa, Gary redid um, Jamaica for everybody and the ships, mm. I mean, the detail was, was crazy. So um, kudos to Gary and his entire team. So um, he will and be and Actually, just, just, as a, just as an actor, you know, going on set, as you said, Matt, like you felt at home there, you know, you maybe had only just been there and you, you know, you instantly have to pretend this is where you've spent, you know, a lot of time and, just you just felt at home because of all those details, and he he also brought a lot of the characters, I guess, individual um, characters into certain elements of the sets as well. I mean, you know, Claire's Claire's um, surgery and, and all these places. I mean, they just they had so much detail. So yeah, we're very we were yeah. very lucky to work with them. I really loved the whole um, medical side of things that we saw Claire doing this season. Um, Katrina, I'm told that you got quite into it with the research and, and understanding it. Um, is that the case? Like, what, what was it like? And uh, can you now do surgery? <laughs> she's she's uh, practicing yeah. now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah can't. Can't. At home. <laughs> I, um, I've joined the front lines of the NHS. No. Right. Um, yes, essential I worker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a stomach no, ache one day and she actually wanted to take out my appendix. It was oh. just, you know. I don't know why I you didn't let me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, no it's it's one of the elements that i i do find really fascinating i mean you can it's amazing what they have on youtube and mm -hmm. how many different procedures you can watch or i remember when we did like uh jenny's breech birth uh in season one i i just fell down a youtube hole for a couple of hours watching all of these breech births and people turning babies inside a stomach but um no it's 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 really fascinating, and I love that this season we got to see Claire really, you know, kind of invest all that time again in her role as a as a healer and a doctor and a surgeon, and um, you know, her her sort of fight to to do, well to first of all discover or rediscover penicillin or cultivate penicillin, I suppose. Um, you know, I think it's fascinating. I think it's something that. It's an interesting element of our show where you have this person who has all of this foreknowledge of medical procedures from the future and, and gets to implement them, but yet has to 
constantly battle with how much she can show her hand because it's also so dangerous. And as we see at the end of the season, you know, this it, it really costs her. But it's um yeah, it's an element of the show I really enjoy. Mm. Um, and Sam, you know, I, it was really hard to see Jamie this season because she's such a she's such a man of honor and integrity. Like that's his whole identity, it, you know. Um, and he, you see him so torn in the season. You know, he's putting on the red coat. He loses his beloved Murta um, and is unable to protect Claire. And you have to have all this emotion that you is bubbling beneath the surface. Um, how did you get in that headspace of all that kind of contained rage and pain and everything that he goes through? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the Mertz storyline, <clears throat> excuse me, was, you know, it's not a part of Diana Gabaldon's books, but I think for me and for Jamie, this is like one of the strongest storylines we've had for him for a while because this this dichotomy he he's in, you know, he is a man of honor. He's, uh, you know, Mertz of his blood. And I think, you know, Jamie's losing a part of himself there. He's losing a part of his his connection to Scotland, his 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 father figure, you know, his confidant, someone that's been there from the beginning. And I know we've all loved working not only um, with Duncan McQuar, who just is, you know, one of the the greats of uh, great characters of Outlander, but but his character as well, you know, was a really fortuitous um, kind of storyline that I think also brought the the regulator story. It kind of brought it home to to the viewer as well. You know, it really put. A, sort of face to the two sides and, and the, the the dichotomy that Jamie was in. And then, of course, you know, at the end, um, you know, sort of seeing Red Jamie kind of, yeah, just just doing everything, going going to battle for Claire, I think, um, uh, was, was, again, just another great storyline. And uh, I think that's what the great thing about Outlander is that we have these huge emotional arcs. We have huge stories. And, and, it, and each season, it seems to get, you know, more complicated and, and, and more involved, but um, it's great. You know, it's a gift to us from, from the writers and from Diana. You know, I do wonder, you, you guys have played these roles for, you know, six years or so now. Um, do you find yourselves talking in their rhythms and kind of feeling like you're in the role when you're not in the role? Is it, are you kind of attached and bonded to these roles? Um, definitely attached, but no, I, I, I don't run around saying Jesus ate truth about Christ. <laughs> um, you should. I think maybe you should. I should. Yeah. Yeah. I, I should try and do that in my real life. Um, no, I, I think, I think, you know, uh, we've, we've definitely become so protective and, and so ingrained in these characters that they feel very organic to us at this point. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, well, I'm sure everyone else will disagree, but I, I don't think I'm quite as hot-headed and big-mouthed as uh, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting, but actually, um, you know, I'm, I think I'm probably the same, and uh, you know, we've become very attached. And I think even right now, with everything that's going on in the world, you know, I think we're realizing, you know, more and more how much we we love our job, how much we love our our family on Outlander. And I just wonder, I wonder what the writers, what Matt, you know, if they if they now think of the characters with a certain voice. Or, or or the way myself and Katrina do it. I think, you know, a lot of them do now, you know, I see that they start oh, to write yeah. the, the sort of the mannerisms that we have, yeah. Yeah, you know, in the season one, we, or certainly early on in season one, we did write to you guys in the sense, yeah. you know, then, and then we wrote. And then over as the seasons go on and on and on, there are certain things that you guys do and then we write to those things and we, we, you know, but it's always, you know, uh, a collaboration between, you know, writer, director, actor, you know, the whole, the whole, you know, um, the whole group of us. So, yeah, I think we, we try to, but um, you know, we have a great, you know, starting point with the books and we do what we can. And there's a lot of fantastic, you know, dialogue that we try to pull right out of the books. And, and I know Kat and Sam, you know, uh, try to do that as, as much as possible when we're, when we're telling these stories. So, mm. Mm. You touched on the costumes a little bit earlier um, when you were talking about the 1960s house scene. Um, 
But this is the first season with Trisha Bigger, right? Um, as your mm. costume designer. Yeah. Do you guys have some favorite costumes from this season? I have to say that I think in this, uh, I forget if it was episode 10, but Claire is wearing this amazing full long skirt with a pistol tucked into her belt. Like it's, <laughs> it's like an accessory. <laughs> I mean, some of the looks and, and the coats and it's all just so amazing. Do you have favorites? Yeah, I mean, I think Trisha has done an incredible job this season. You know, I don't think it's the easiest thing to come in sort of this deep into a show and to be able to put your own stamp on things while also respecting what has gone before. And I think she's been able to do that really beautifully. Um, and for me, I mean, for Claire, you know, I, I do that that blue sort of riding coat that I have is really, really stunning. But um equally there's one that's kind of like a green suit that almost has this nautical kind of feel to it um which i thought was really beautiful but you know working with her especially for ep12 was really fantastic because we talked a lot about the emotion and and you know picking that color and how we how we sort of found that and found that silhouette because we wanted it to be something quite simple but striking and have that you know, red, the color of danger, red, the color of alert and all of those things. And it was just, you know, it's great having her here and being able to sort of collaborate in those ways. Mm. What about you, Sam? You had some awesome yeah, costumes this season. I mean, some awesome costumes this season. And, you know, we obviously we see the return of the kilt, which I think uh, is something that we all you know we're, we're wanting to see. And it was just about finding the right place for that. But, um, and actually the red coat for me, you know, was a, a big one, again, going back to that storyline and then it had so much symbolism behind it and uh, everything that Jamie's fought against. But I agreed, yeah, Trisha, she was great at collaborating. She really was. And um, probably the most sort of striking piece for me is the, the coat you see in the last, um, almost the last scenes there when Jamie goes back to the Brownsville, he has this leather, long leather jacket. And it's yeah. it's pretty awesome. I kind of want to steal it from my, from my real life. But, um, yeah, well, now you ruined it because when, when it goes missing, we'll know where to find it. When it goes missing, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see me out when you see me out wearing that. But um, she's yeah. been fantastic to collaborate with, and and very, very, um, very, very easy to work with, and just I think she's done a great job. So I have another audience member question from Jan. Um, since season one in 2014, what do you feel you've learned as actors? Nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say everything. <laughs> everything and nothing. <laughs> everything. <laughs> About nothing. Um, oh, God. I, I mean, I, I was so green. <laughs> I, mean, I, I had, I had uh, hardly done anything before I started Outlander. So I've, I've learned all the technical terms, um, <laughs> what a mark is, all of those things. Um, no, I think... I think one of the greatest things about being on a show for this long and having the sort of environment that we have with Outlander is to, first of all, trust yourself, but also allow yourself to constantly be surprised. I think by our characters, by storylines, um, you know, it's not very often that you get this long to tell a story and it's it's really lovely to to continually be learning new things about your character yeah i mean i i think i would agree totally you know it's um impossible to be complacent on the show as i said you know it's constantly moving it you know gone it's gone from scotland through through france to the caribbean and now in america and it feels like a completely different show you know we're talking about america now in its infancy and um, there's so many parallels going on right now, but it's uh, it, it's been a great show to to learn on, and I think Katrina and I, you know, coming in very green, have uh, we've experienced a lot, you know, and um, I think it's also given us great opportunity as well, um, and and great people to work with, you know, we've learned a lot from from our co-stars and and our and our, our writers and our showrunners, so it's been uh, yeah, it's been a good experience. I just wish we were 20 years younger. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, so this is really one from Matthew, but you, you guys, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you could throw the book out, what would you do with Claire and Jamie and Brianna and Roger? What would happen? 
and you can all answer this, but I imagine mm, this is good. I'd yeah. Well, happy. I would probably, given this, given this moment in time, I would probably have them set sail for maybe Hawaii and set up a uh, some sort of medical facility. I'm where, with you. Uh, and and then on um, the beach. Yeah. Um, yeah, on the beach, somewhere on the beach. Um, Jamie, uh, Jamie invents surfing, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, Claire goes Roger into medicinal Brie. cocktails. <laughs> yes, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> we open up a little uh, Palapa Cabana thing, uh, you know, something mm. like. I, I think, I think, you know, if being serious, to throw out the the book, um, I don't know, you know, given the state of the world, I would probably just have them go back to Scotland and and do something in Scotland and be in the Highlands or just because that's where we film and, and, you know, we may be able to control the world a little better there. You know, I know that we're all dying to get back to work. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know, Kat, Sam, do you got to throw out the book? I never even thought. Of I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really into it's your Hawaii idea. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm sold on that, you know? Yeah. 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 A little I don't know. I think, I think, I think throwing out the book, I just I wouldn't want to incur the wrath of, of Diana Gabaldon and her and her amazing fans. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, but I mean, I think we all miss Scotland, you know, in the, the, the character of Scotland. And I think um, yeah, it would be nice to, to sort of revisit some of that that early season stuff. Mm. Now, I did just mention the character of Brianna, who's obviously played by the brilliant Sophie Skelton. Um, and that sort of leads me to another audience question from JLS, who says, what is a particular scene for you, Katrina, with Brie that you found challenging this season? There's some great, there's some great scenes with you guys. I found challenging. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I always love when, when Sophie and I get to work together. Um, you know, she's so amazing and, and we always have such a good time. You know, I, I think I, I just love when they get to be really supportive. And I think you see this with, with you know, coming from where their relationship started uh, in season two, when there was such a gulf between them, um, to now when, you know, when, when Brianna's really struggling with Roger, that Claire is there to be able to, you know, give her advice and, and be the mother that she always wished she could be. But then... On the flip of that, you see Brianna be very much this kind of sage um, fountain of advice for Claire very often. So I don't know. I mean, I, I'm i not sure if they're challenging. They've just been really enjoyable. Yeah. I thought you were going to mention the peanut butter jelly sandwich scene and how you just Which also is not challenging because we no. <laughs> enjoyed eating those so much. <laughs> just ate them all. Scene. I love it. It's so funny. Um, so I also know that you guys were both producers this season. Um, how has that added to your experience on the show, taking on that? We have a new bar back backstage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's very you busy. You approve this bar, um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, I've been quite busy with that. But uh, no, I think, you know, we both, um, we got the, the, the credit, which has been fantastic, and just to be involved in, um, sort of involved in the production meetings and, and been uh, consulting with, with Matt and the, and the other writers and just to have more of an input. Um, I think we've learned a lot from seeing how much prep goes on, um, some of the specifics as well. It really is quite, um, quite, you know, quite a jigsaw piece and such a huge show. So it's been really important for us to, to see part of that. And, and also, I think probably F12 was you know, the, where you see the most uh, of our influence because you know, we were really back and forth with with uh, with Matt and Tony and, and Jamie and it was it was you know tough material but I think really rewarding for all of us. Yeah, I think you know we've we've been in such a unique position where Sam and I since day one on this show um, have sort of been the two characters with which the story has been told and it you know as season three season four. Um, started, we started to open up that world a lot more and, and give sort of other characters these storylines, which I think has, you know, benefited our show so much. And it's also given Sam and I the opportunity to maybe 
take on more responsibility. And for me, I think, you know, I always want to be growing no matter where I am and I don't want to sort of stay static. And so this just seemed like such an amazing opportunity to keep learning and see where we can be of benefit to the show. And hopefully, Matt, we have been <laughs> and, and not pains in the asses. But, um, you know, I do think we have our writers room in L.A. and we have quite a lot of new writers and, and producers you know, over the seasons and the fact that we're, we've kind of been this constant as Matt has and, and Meryl since day one, I think that's really been of a benefit to kind of keep the core of our show and, and the, the sort of essence of our show um, sort of always at the forefront. Well, I just want to say thank you all so much for being here. I can't wait to see what you do next. I hope this show just goes on forever. It never gets old. So just keep at it. And um, thank you so much for everything today. It's been really enjoyable. Thank you. Thanks. Thank okay. you so we'll much, Antonia. Thank yes. you. Bye. Bye.